So well, hello everybody. Uh, so um, so the journey. So I'm going to use actually. Uh, I think I'm missing one slide there, but I, I'll continue. What is the journey that I want to talk to you about? Is um, is uh, not from the developing of the model. Is if you want to create a community model for somebody who is a geomorphologist. We have I have no experience developing uh, community models. What are all the steps that we have to take? So I'm really pleased. It's the first time that I'm on this conference by looking at material presented in previous conference. I came across uh, many useful material. For example, uh, the Turing uh, project, which is kind of showing you the pathway to open and reproduci reproducible uh, research. Uh, and that's the journey that I want to talk to you all, all about today. So it's about how do we design the project, uh, how we make the project uh, reproducible, uh, what are the ethics behind the project, uh, um, um, outreach that we are doing, etc. So but let's start with the problem first. So why we are doing what we are doing. So there is an ambition from BGS, the Coastal team, uh, and all of our collaborators that we want to, to be the a trusted provider of, of data and knowledge and software uh, for making decisions about coastal adaptation. And uh, I'm going to bring three examples, uh, the three examples you see in the picture, to, to make the case that this is happening today. We are not doing things for something that is happening in the future. And you see three pictures. You see London, the London barrier. You, you see the one on the, on the very, I uh, just looking on the very, on the very left. You see the London barrier standing up. You see that this is we're looking from the sea, looking at London at the very back, and that's when the barrier is is uh, uh, it's uh, raised to protect from the storm surge. Yeah, and this is happening again and again, more often and more often. It was designed to be raised by about 15 times per, per year, and I think it has been raised by 60 times uh, times uh, per year. I think last year and before. So they are thinking about how do we better protect London. You can imagine London, big city, so you have to think about hold the line, building more defenses. That's one approach that uh, it will be suitable for places like, like London. But then you got the other two sides. You got Haysbra in the middle and you got uh, Fairborn uh, in the other side, which are not as heavily populated and they are suffering problems. So Fairborn in Wells, they are suffering from the problem of uh, being already below mean sea level. The breakwater that was protecting the, the village was broken. Um, it's not cost effective to repair the, the breakwater given the cost of the population, which is mostly senior people and, uh, and no, infra no other critical infrastructure than, than housing. So they are actually thinking about relocating the entire village. That's, that's happening as we talk. And then in the middle, you got Haysbra, which is um, in, in East England. That is a coast that has been defending for many years. So you can see the coastal defense uh, along the, in the picture on the coast. Um, it, again, it's becoming old, it's becoming 50 and, and older, and it's becoming more and more expensive to maintain. So they have to make a decision. Do we maintain and repair, which is costly, or do we remove the defenses, because it's a hazard to, to the people? What happens when you remove a defense of a place that has been defended uh, for many years is that you see what you haven't seen in many years, a really quick erosion after the removal. So the question is, how far is going to erode? Uh, which properties do we have to remove? And for example, you see the caravan park that is in the, in the middle picture is no longer there. They actually relocate the entire caravan park. It's, uh, it's moved inland. So for those kind of adaptations, that's what we're trying to inform with, uh, with our software. Uh, and this is only for the UK, but this is a global problem. So you have a, a figure to give you an idea. If you do adapt, you can save lots of money uh, globally. So what we are doing, I'm going to use the Haysbra example to, to introduce Coastal ME, the Coastal Modeling Environment. So Coastal ME is a FOSS, it's a free, op, free and open uh, source uh, software for your spatial modeling, in particular 3D coastal landscape evolution modeling uh, that has been developed over the years, and that's the journey that I'm talking today. But just to, to give you a flavor where at the moment and why are we using this. So you've got another picture, this is Haysbra. Uh, you see it in 1992 when it was defended, and in 1990, 2012, sorry, when they removed the defenses in this period, they have observed about 140 meters of really quick erosion after the defense removal. The question is, if you keep removing defenses, will you keep seeing the same kind of erosion that you've seen during those uh, years? So that's a question, the first question we ask uh, our model. So on the left, uh, on the right, what you have is, um, is a simulation of, of a coastal ME, but in particular we were looking at the, at the cliff top. Uh, even though we simulate the whole landscape. And we, we were able to reproduce the erosion that we've seen in the, in the few years. It's not from 1992, but in the last few years, it's becoming a staple, and only a few places are, are eroding them. We are confident that we can reproduce this one, so we're happy that we have something that can be of use for our stakeholders. So along the journey that we, we've been through, 
there is one particular flagship that we are very proud of, that is when we were developing this as a proof of concept, uh, we, uh, we were approached by University of Granada that they have the same problem, they need to inform the stakeholders, they need to, to provide uh, access to, to the public good, and they need to assess what's going to happen in the next 50 years for the whole Andalusia coast, South Spain. We're talking about 1,200 uh, kilometers of coastline. And they came to us and said, can we use your model to, to reproduce this one? I said, well, what we have is a proof of concept. We are making this operational, but it's far from there. But the project was at two and a half years, so we've been working with them. Um, I'm not going to say much more on this one because I'm going to advertise that actually in a couple of weeks we will be in Malaga learning from others what have we done, things that, can, that went well, things that can be improved, etc. So it's, it's, an, it's open uh, and free, so please uh, pop up if you want. But you, one thing that I, that I will highlight in here is that uh, from the data perspective, it's not only on the software, it's not only the model that we are using to simulate the causes, how do you put together all the data that decision makers need to take into account uh, to make the decision that they have to make, is a big challenge. And if, when you are talking about a thousand of kilometers, you can imagine the amount of data that you have to pull together and the format that you have to use to put that data together is, is challenging. So now a bit of a journey on the design of the project. I think that was, uh, Patrick was mentioning that everything that we do, we do it listening to our stakeholders, and this pretty much doing, using the, this agile uh, development. What we do is we develop something quickly, we get it out, hear the feedback, and then we implement the feedback quickly so we can have several iterations of, of what we've done. Uh, and then we ensure that what we're doing is actually something useful. That's what we did, so we went from the proof of concept uh, to a limited scope application to a full rollout where we are now. Um, we did having key stakeholders, for example, the Environment Agency include our modeling as a proof of concept in 2016. That was the first project. And it's one of those models identified as potential for decision making. It is very important that we got the buy-in from, from the beginning from our stakeholders. So we have academics, we have industry, and we apply this to different locations in the UK. And that's where the, our colleagues from Andalusia came, came to us, and we were co-developing the same methodology, but now with a very different environment, the South Andalusia, to, to apply the same model. And where we are now is in an ongoing project. It will finish in 2027, where we are looking at how do you bring things that are relevant for our decision makers, which is uh, nature-based solutions. You might have heard this in many different fields. Coastal is not an exception. How do you incorporate those into our modeling framework? That's what we're trying to do uh, at the moment. So the team, the team is quite small. So we are, um, I mean, the, you see uh, the person with the arms crossed uh, and the, the red uh, shirt, this is Dave. So uh, we are geomorphologists. That's what I was pointing that Dave, as myself, we are geomorphologists, but Dave has been a professor of C++ uh, coding for all his career. So he's uh, the brain behind the code and uh, the brain behind the process understanding and, and the other. And then we've been gathering other people as we, we were across. And we have the first meeting not long ago in February 2023. But we're bringing key people, industry, the people who will be running the model is, are helping us developing the model, but also academia, the kind of skills and things that we know can be done better. We are trying to, to get all done as we go along. Uh, so if you look at the background, if uh, there was published in science a, a while ago, and that's one of the material, useful material that I found in one of the presentation uh, previous FOSS events. So if you want, you want to make sure that you, what you're doing is reproducible, so you have a whole spectrum of options. You can either publish your paper, that's how, that's how we did it. You can put the publication plus the code. You can put the publication code and data. You can even make your code linkable and provide the data accessible, and then you have the gold standard, the full replication. Where we are at the moment, um, we started with uh, publishing the code and, and no data, which is the one at the very left, as you see. Um, we put the C++ code publicly available. We were using GDAL, another uh, FOSS uh, software, and we put everything in GitHub to make sure that everybody can access. And that's how our Granada colleagues find, out, find the problem, they test it, and they, they wanted to, to develop further. So then in the second phase, what we did was make the code and, and, and again the software uh, publicly available. And now you, you kind of see, if you, if, you have, if you have done the journey yourself, you see problems already arising just by looking at the DOIs that I have. So now we have the original GitHub repository where we put the, fir the very first code. And now we have two more GitHub repositories. We have the one that Dave, which is very active and is being updating the code as we went through the Andalusia project. 
and also the Andalusia colleagues in Granada, they have another uh, uh, code developed. So we are suffering the problem that we are not a community model developers, we are geomorphologists, and we are not using GitHub to the full capacity. So that is something that we know we have to improve and make sure that we're using GitHub as it is. It's a, it's a community developing uh, uh, platform. But that's one of the challenges. But for me, the biggest challenge that we have is uh, when you want to make what we are doing reproducible, but not, all, not, not only on the technical point of view, making the source link and all that, it's more about the data. Um, I'll use the, the last slide to, to make the point what I mean that. Um, the, the skills that you need to, to actually run. If, if we publish something and you say, I don't trust what you've done, I want to replicate everything by myself, the number of skills you will need to do that are too many. To the point that, for example, Granada colleagues who were trying to develop this with uh, consult engineering consultants in South Spain, uh, they couldn't find uh, enough people with expertise needed to, to do this kind of, of analysis. You have a, a number of things in there that you, that you need, but that's one of the key things that, I, that I'm finding. It's not about the, the, the infrastructure, the software infrastructure. I think that that's relatively easy to solve. It's more about making sure that the people, the community who will be using uh, the software, they have the skills needed to, to do so. Uh, I would probably finish with this one, which is, uh, of course, if you are thinking to, about contributing to any FOSS 4G in the near time, Please think about Costa Lamy, and I'm open to any question if you have any. Thank you.